If you hate those creepy little Ewoks, this video is for you. This video is 10 random Death Star facts you may or may not know. All of this is officially canon, so unfortunately nothing from the recently de-canoned Expanded Universe, which is now called Legends. If you're confused about what is canon and what isn't at this point, you can check the video description below, where I have a link you can click and check out the material. Number 1. The cost of building a Death Star is over a trillion galactic credits, and the first Death Star took almost 20 years to complete. This was because well, for one, the size, but also in how they constructed it, the organization, and where they had to get their supplies. From Sentinel Base, where the Battle Station project was being overseen, there were delays and long waits for shipments from research sites, asteroid mines that proved unfeasible, the searching of kyber crystals all over the galaxy, and shipments from varying locations. And because the Emperor at first made sure no one had unrestricted access to the information involving shipments, scheduling, or construction progress, it meant no one person was actually in charge of the mobile battle station project. Which you can imagine caused a lot of difficulties, especially when the project got to the point where it had countless suppliers and millions or tens of millions of beans involved with various parts of the battle station. There was also construction phase deadlines missed at first due to arguing and disagreements of scientists and engineers and other supervisors of the project. This would be mostly dealt with when Tarkin was given control of the entire project and was an overseer able to coordinate all construction and defenses on the mobile battle station. Lastly, the building of the station would be hit by delays from attacks and those seeking to strike back and hurt the Empire. Number 2. After the first Death Star was destroyed, Palpatine had the designer responsible for the weak spot executed. He then cloned the man and forced him to design the plans for the Death Star 2 without the weak spot. Kill you, clone you, put you back to work. The Empire way. The Death Star 2 was actually quite a bit bigger and more advanced than the original Death Star. The first Death Star was 75 miles in diameter, the second was 99 miles in diameter. The super laser aboard the first Death Star took 24 hours to recharge. The super laser on the Death Star 2 took only 3 minutes to recharge. There were 357 internal levels on the first Death Star, and 560 internal levels on the Death Star 2. As well, the second Death Star had almost double the crew at around 637,000. Combining the crew and passengers and the Death Star 2 held almost 2.5 million people. Number 4. The weaponry on the Death Star 2 was insane. It had 15,000 standard turbo lasers, 15,000 heavy turbo lasers, 5,000 ion cannons, and 7,500 laser cannons. On top of that, the Death Star 2 could hold thousands of TIE starfighters of various models, and on top of that, shuttles and ground assault vehicles such as AT-ATs and ATSTs. Most impressive. Number 5. The Super Laser was actually powered by hypermatter reactors. Multiple lasers were focused through massive kyber crystals into a beam that could destroy a planet. Interesting enough, the Empire continued searching for new crystals, and one crystal was located by the Rebels seen in Star Wars Rebels TV show. However, they destroyed it before the Empire could use it. Number 6. The sound the Death Star Super Laser makes was actually taken from the buzzing of spaceships from Flash Gordon's 1930s science fiction series, which was a favorite of George Lucas's. Number 7. We have an exact number of stormtroopers that was on the original Death Star, 25,984. I had friends on that Death Star. Number 8. The real purpose behind the Death Star. The real purpose for the Death Star was to serve as a tangible symbol and constant reminder of the dark side, which would free the Emperor from having to portray that part. As well, the Emperor wanted to use the mobile battle station in making sure that the Force could not strike back, and eventually whatever faint light of hope that remained could be snuffed out completely. Palpatine also hoped that the creation of the Death Star would give him and Vader more time to explore matters of the dark side that had little to do with the Empire. Number 9. To help achieve this end, Palpatine would eventually put Tarkin, a man he highly respected and saw value in, in charge of the Death Star project. Tarkin believed that the threat alone of unleashing destructive powers on rebellious star systems was enough to keep them in line. Tarkin's quote on the first Death Star, Fear will keep the local systems in line. 
fear of this battle station. Tarkin would later write in his memoir that the only regret he had was not making the Death Star plans come to fruition faster, to frustrate those trying to stop the Emperor and his noble plans. And number 10, the Death Star 2 was nearly 3% of the size of the moon of Endor. Due to the Death Star 2 being stationary, it required tremendous force to counter the moon's gravity. It used a repulsor lift field created by a shield generator on Endor to maintain its position. Because of the force generated by the Death Star, it created earthquakes, tidal imbalances, and other geological disturbances on Endor. Poor creepy Ewoks. So those are my 10 random Death Star facts. Make sure you come back every Monday and Friday for new Star Wars videos along with Star Wars news that includes the comics and the Star Wars Rebels TV show. Besides that, come back for Game of Thrones, comics, and The Walking Dead.